Hello there, Drew Hannish of Whiskey Lore. It is time for another tasting video. And today we are doing a whiskey that sometimes finds itself on allocation. Some states it's easy to find, other states it's not. Buffalo Trace. And Buffalo Trace is what I like to call the bourbon bourbon. It, it, to me, when I taste this whiskey, I think this is what bourbon is supposed to taste like. So I'm going to do a tasting on this and I'm going to give you a little bit of a lesson on where the name Buffalo Trace comes from and all of the different names that have been associated with the Buffalo Trace Distillery because they brag that they are the longest continuously running distillery. As we go through the history, I'm going to dispel some of that. So, um, Buffalo Trace, uh, the name it harkens back to the time when Hancock and Lee came out to Kentucky. As they say, they followed where the buffalo came through, and so that's where we get the name Buffalo Trace. And of course, buffalo would always, and this is actually good to inject here, there actually have never been buffalo in the United States ever. How am I so sure of that? Because what we call buffalo are actually bison. So let's just get that straight right off the bat. So we'll talk about buffalo trace, but it's actually bison trace would be a more appropriate name for this whiskey. Buffalo are like water buffalo. You find them in Africa. Buffalo just became a name that got attached to the American bison. So all that out of the way, the name of Buffalo Trace has changed over the years, the name of the distillery itself, and the brand Buffalo Trace didn't start until late in the 20th century. So if Hancock and Lee came out in 1775, we don't know whether they were distilling or not. They set up Lee's Town, which is where the distillery is right now. And it wasn't until 1812 that we can get to a real record of a man named Harrison Blanton who came in and actually established a distillery there on site. And so it continued making whiskey all the way up until 1870 when a man named Colonel E.H. Taylor came in. There's going to be a lot of names here that you're familiar with. Colonel E.H. Taylor comes in and... He really, he, he builds uh, one distillery, um, there's a fire, now they build a second distillery. If you go to Bourbon Pompeii at Buffalo Trace to do that tour, you get the whole history behind that. Very, very cool. They've just rediscovered the older distilleries and old fermentation tank that they're actually making some new whiskey out of. And so E.H. Taylor did all of this work to renovate the distillery and he went bankrupt. And his partner, George T. Stagg, well, things didn't go well between the two of them. Uh, they had a falling out, and soon Colonel E. H. Taylor's out on his tail, and he's overrunning the old Taylor distillery, which is now Castle and Key. Meanwhile, we have George T. Stagg running the distillery, which will take his name in 1904. So by 1904, the distillery is now the George T. Stagg Distillery. At some time before that, and I believe it was E.H. Taylor around his time that the distillery was known as the OFC Distillery, which could mean old fashioned copper or it could mean old fire copper. Now I tend to see old fashioned copper more officially surrounding Colonel E.H. Taylor so I, and, and products that came out after that. So I, I tend to lean on the old fashioned copper, but old fire copper is a name that gets floated around a bit as the name of the distillery. So 1904, it's now the George T. Stagg Distillery. At the time, or around that time, Albert Blanton came to work at the distillery and worked his way up the latter. And by 1918, Kentucky goes into Prohibition two years before the rest of the country does. And 
the distillery is then, its future is in doubt. But Albert Blanton sees real potential, even though they're creating a constitutional amendment and there had never been one that had been repealed before. So he was taking quite a chance, but he decided to go ahead and buy the distillery, kept it as George T. Stagg. It survived. They actually got a license to store medicinal whiskey they were not producing. And this is where I get into the issue with this statement of continuously running distillery. Well, it wasn't distilling because it legally couldn't distill until a distiller's holiday came up in 1928. And even then they didn't distill. And so, I don't know, That's a, this is the hard part about history and trying to make definite statements about things. They came back out, Blanton's plan was brilliant. They reemerged. Now over time, they ended up being purchased by a company called Age International. And this is where another bit of confusion in the name comes in. If you've ever seen Ancient Age and Ancient Ancient Age, sometimes it would be called the Ancient Age Distillery. The only reason it would ever be called that is because they made Ancient Age there. It was still officially known as the George T. Stagg Distillery, and that would last all the way up. Uh, wouldn't be until, um, I'm gonna have to check my notes real quick. Um, so 83 was when Age International came in, uh, 1999 is when the name Buffalo Trace came about, uh, the whiskey using mash bill number one and the name of the distillery changed to Buffalo Trace at that time. So last year of the old century is when the name changed. So now it's Buffalo Trace and it has been Buffalo Trace. It's owned by Sazerac. And so um, anyway, just thought I'd give you a little bit of a, a background on the name because the name gets confusing through history and it bounces around between so many different people. And, uh, you know, names like Elmer T. Lee come up and yes, he uh, also was a uh, uh, distiller there at, at Buffalo Trace. So it, it can be very confusing and hopefully that kind of gave you the quick overview of where the name Buffalo Trace came from. So this whiskey, 45% ABV, 90 proof, guessing this is around eight year. The Eagle Rare, which is the older version of this is 10 year. So we're guessing probably probably seven, eight years, somewhere in that range for Buffalo Trace. The younger version would be Old Charter, and even younger than that is Benchmark. So if you're liking the names that I'm throwing out there, it's because they all use the same mash bill, it's just they, they warehouse differently. And if you go on the Buffalo Trace tour and you get a really good guide who talks about those warehouses, it's amazing how each of those warehouses have has its own character uh, for each different type of whiskey. So they're very specific about which warehouse, because they were all built over time. So they're all built out of different materials, so they all age whiskeys differently. It's, it's fascinating. So this has a caramel, nutty kind of a smell to it. And then I get a herbal rye that comes in Just a hint of an herbal rye in there, but for me, there's probably more of the caramel and, and nuttiness that comes through on the nose. Mm. Oh, it's buttery. Nice mouthfeel to it. You get some of the spice from the rye in that. A little brown sugar buttery, very buttery on the palate, which is really nice. Slight Kentucky hug, nothing too aggressive. Um, a little mint, a little spice comes in. Ah, nuttiness, and that caramel comes through again on the finish. 
I have people who tell me how much they love Eagle Rare, and I, I always say Eagle Rare is just a little bit too much oak for me. The Buffalo Trace is that perfect spot for me. And if you like a little bit of a herbally rye character, it's, it's a nice little um, feature of this that I think for the rye fan makes this whiskey even more interesting. But to me, this is an amalgamation of a lot of what bourbon should be, in my opinion. And so that's why I think this is a very good whiskey and one that I recommend to people although it's very hard to find at times because of allocation. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little history lesson. If you did, and now your brain has grown and you can go out and impress your friends with all the different names and how they all relate to different eras of Buffalo Trace, then uh, please like and subscribe and I will do more of these videos down the road. And until next time, cheers and slan java. Great everyday drinker.